Hello everybody and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today we're going to be analyzing Brown and Brown Company, um, ticker BRO. It looks as though they are an insurance broker. Um, I do track this one, but I hadn't looked at it very closely in quite a while, so I'm kind of glad that it came in by request uh, down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a request, drop it down in the comments. I'll get the ticker on the, listed on the whiteboard behind me and eventually I'll make a video. If it's a stock that's in the S&P 500, I usually post those on YouTube for free. Um, the rest I post on Patreon, which is $5 a month. And if you join there, you can get a big discount to the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha. Um, and those links will be down in the description. Um, also, you see me use fast graphs a lot in my in my videos. I've been using it about five years now, and it really speeds up the amount of time I can analyze a stock, especially during the initial analysis when you're kind of sorting through things. Um, there's a 25% discount code down in the uh, comment or in the description that you can use there if you ever decide you want a fast graphs subscription. Um, I get a little commission for, from that, so it helps out the channel a lot if you uh, if you use that link. Okay, um, as always, this isn't individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. Let's get into Brown and Brown. Um, I, this is a pretty interesting one. So I used to, I uh, usually almost always start by looking at the long-term earnings cyclicality here. And we have a little bit of a moderate kind of earnings decline during the Great Recession. So, but it's not super deep. So I don't think this is like a super cyclical business. I might actually look at the basic earnings too, just to see. Yeah, not much difference. So um, I would consider this kind of moderately cyclical. What you really saw during this period was a multiple compression. So I can just tell looking here, so investors were very um, optimistic with the 31 PE on the company. It looks like they were growing about 15% maybe going in. Um, it looks like it was a little bit of a canary in the coal mine situation, right? So we see that their stock price started falling well before the market actually um, kind of picked up on the troubles that were coming. But we ended up getting a, uh, yeah, like a 55% decline, even though earnings only fell 25%, we'll say, or no, 21 or 2%. Um, so we, we can see that if the valuation is pretty high, the stock price can be much more um, volatile than the actual earnings, right? So the stock price fell twice as, more than twice as much, almost probably three times as much as the earnings did when it trades at a 30 PE. I actually don't know what the PE it's trading at now because I haven't looked at it, but I just thought that dynamic is important to point out because it jumped out at me. Um, that can be a good opportunity if, if you're if you don't want to buy a, into a business that cyclic businesses with cyclical earnings are generally riskier um so if you can get one that, that has a lot of price volatility or cyclicality and the earnings aren't really that cyclical it can be a little bit of a safer kind of bet when everything's going getting really scary in the market like in 2008 so that's something to consider. Let's see what the, oh, the PE actually is very similar to what it was back in 2006. So that's, I thought that might be the case. Actually, let's go back here and see. Yeah, almost exactly the same if we go to like mid to, to 2022. Um, so that's worth keeping in mind if, and they've had similar type of earnings growth during this time period. Let's see. 15%, which is exactly a, roughly what it was going into the Great Recession. So we kind of see the same setup. It's just important to know that as an investor, that this pattern that we, this trend that we see near term here is unlikely to continue like unabated forever. Um, you want to understand that even if earnings this year disappointed a little bit or flattened out and then the next year they fell a couple a little bit if there's a recession that instead of the stock price going down like 20 percent it could go down 50 percent or 55 percent um because the valuation has basically has this priced in this earnings growth priced in like it will be, go uninterrupted it we've seen in the past that it can be interrupted at least a little bit 
Um, so that it's, it's almost more about the mentality that you want to have. Actually, you can even see here during March 2020 earnings were they never fell at all. Um, but we'll see what the stock price fell more than 30 percent. So that's equal to the market, um, even though earnings were totally, totally fine. They grew up 20 percent the year before, actually. So. So those are all things to kind of keep in mind before we get into the earnings analysis. So what I'm going to do next is kind of take this earnings. I'm going to guess I probably took that 2015 year out because it was pretty big. Um, and we'll see what we, if we use earnings and we use earnings growth to see what kind of earnings kind of kegger we would get over the next 10 years if we paid the 28 PE or whatever it's they want for it right now. Um, so I'm assuming a 12.48% earnings growth rate. I think that's very fair, pretty much spot on to what we've seen once you take into account the down years that happen occasionally. Um, they don't have a whole lot of debt. Um, let's see, which the way that I've been doing this is I look at the difference between the market cap and the total enterprise value, and then I add to the stock price whatever percentage this difference is it looks like maybe about 20 percent i'll tell you for sure here in just a second uh 12 so not much that's not very much at all that's very standard um for almost any company um any big company right now so but i do take it into account so let's see we have this is without the debt we're looking at a 23 pe so with it it's probably going to be more like 20 a mm, little over 25 it looks like um, that gives us an earnings yield of 3.84%. Okay, earnings yield is the inverse of the PE ratio. So earnings over price, and it, it will give you a percentage. I have it expressed as a decimal there. So the way I like to think about it is, you take the earnings yield, which is 3.84%. If you bought the stock for 100, if you bought the whole business for $100, you could keep $3.84 of earnings. Um, based on what you paid for the $100 for the business each year. That would grow, that $3.84 would grow at 12% per year. Um, I go out 10 years to see what kind of kegger I would get over 10 years. Um, so the way you think about it is you paid $100 for the business, including your $100, it's worth 177 after 10 years. And then you work out the kegger on that over that time, and it comes to 5.92%. That is, um, I would say, a slightly cheaper than the average S&P 500 stock, but not um, cheap, not uh, like below 5% is where I would sell. So as the price goes up, this number goes down, all other things being equal. When the price goes down, this number goes up. 6.5% is kind of my medium, medium midpoint of fair value. So it's more expensive than the midpoint of my fair value, but it's less expensive than the market, which is getting close to 5% now. I mean, um, the market is pretty expensive when you when you look at the bigger businesses that are weighted more heavily. Um, so, so I would say like this would be like a hold if I owned it. Um, wouldn't be really, this wouldn't be the time I would really be buying it, mostly because we know interest rates are higher. We know in recession risk is at least somewhat elevated I think we aren't early cycle I don't think so and we know that these guys that the stock will probably fall more than earnings during a weakness a week period or recession and you know that you could lose I mean the stock could go down 50 percent right so if we have a recession I have two different ways to think about this here then I would be looking to buy a little under $36 a share based on the Great Recession um, data that we saw. If, if you don't think we're gonna have a recession or you think we're mid-cycle or you just don't really care about trying to take recession into account, then it's um, the buy price is higher, which is when this number goes over 8%, and that's about $55 a share. So that's only 33% lower, so any little if we had a little disappointment, a little blip in um, you know what the market thinks about future earnings, 
then that's definitely like attainable with stock. I'm not sure what it did during the dip we had before. What I say, 30, that might have even hit it then. Let's take a look. 55.44 and it was down to 53.80. So it was at that non-recessionary buy price back in 2023, March of 2023. So it could definitely happen again. Maybe there will be influenced by banking. Um, I don't exactly know how this business, I don't exactly know what their particular insurance brokership does. I usually look at the past and try to extrapolate it out a little bit from that. But since we are having the, the kind of regional banking crisis in, in March of 2023, um, and their stock price took a little hit then, they also had weaker earnings in 2022 also. So there's kind of two things going on there if you have something like that that happens again i think it definitely could easily get below the non-recession buy price i'm still being more cautious right now but you know that's an individual decision if you're just looking for um kind of a number to look at and you're like hey i'm not in the business of predicting economic cycles i'm just going to try to get like a decent value and this is the type of company you could probably do that with as well they just have a great long-term track record um there's nothing wrong with paying a fair price um, and then just accepting that you might get volatility whenever a uh, recession comes along. Maybe even buy a little bit more if that happens. So that can be a good strategy to use. Um, so those are my that's my thoughts on uh, Brown & Brown. Thanks for the request. If anybody else has any requests um, or you're interested in uh, the Fast Graphs, hit the, hit the link down in the description. Um, drop any requests in the comments and I'll see everybody later. Bye.